Yes, it's Halloween in December, <laughs> as, the, as it shows in the little thumbnail for this video. I finally, after two months, got my Japan Crate box. As you can see, it's got some nice artwork on it. And a little bit on the bottom, not much. The sides. Uh, this is actually a recent box because my first one got lost. Somebody stole it in the mail, obviously, during transit from Japan to here. And I never received it. So I wrote Japan Crate and they said, okay, we'll send you another one. No problem. So finally got it <laughs> after a one long ass wait. I never, uh, I've had stuff go missing from in my box from in being inspected during uh, at the border you know when it comes over but not the whole box itself it's very strange there's the nice cover very artful i like that and here are the various items that you'll see inside that i'll be showing you and there's the whole cover folded out And, like last time, uh, it's been a long while, it might have been last year or something like that, when uh, something went missing from my box because of inspection. I got a, a mail interception notice in here. And they took out something because it says it had dehydrated meat or swine in it. And looking over, which makes no sense at all, if it's dehydrated, who cares? I mean, it's not like it's going to hurt anybody. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and looking over everything in here, the only thing that, that's missing is this Umabo stick, which I'm going to guess is what they claim to be dehydrated swine. But they obviously have no understanding of Umabos because it's just spice. They only put spice on those. So it's not like... I can understand last time, to a degree, I can understand it, but they, they took out uh, some potato chips because they were barbecue flavored <laughs> or something like that. And again, it's just spice. It's not actual meat. Who cares? So they're, they're, they are extremely stupid at the border check, you know, when it comes to aspects of what's in the boxes and saying, hmm, well, this one can't go through. If it feels like actual meat. Okay, sure. Take it out. <clears throat> That's not the case. I like the contents of this box, though. There's some good stuff. And I'm glad I got a reissue. Thank you, Japan Crate. And we got some milk caramel tea. This is by Lipton. Yep. Refresh yourself with this limited edition Lipton caramel tea after a long night of trick-or-treating in Halloween festivities. All right, let's check it out. It says, Happy Halloween. <coughs> Excuse me. does not really... There's a little bit of chocolatey smell, but it doesn't have much of a scent at all. Hmm. Mild tang? Not... When you first take it in, almost flowery in a way. Especially up in your senses, your smell. But the taste is like chocolate milk in a way. It's, it's good. It's an unusual. It doesn't really taste like caramel. It's more like chocolate milk with a mild, very mild uh flowery taste to it very it's it's an unusual sweet uh concoction i mean it's it's not over it's not overly sweet at all i mean it's very much like chocolate milk <coughs> now we have a little dagashi snack something that looks like it's from pokemon or whatever it's supposed to hot to uh where we have this Oh, it's, yeah, Pokemon Halloween Party Pack. These Halloween edition chocolate puffs snacks are shaped like mini Pikachus. Oh, yeah, they are. 
They're fun and tasty as is, mixed with milk or sprinkled on desserts. Yeah, if I remember right, these are basically like cereal. There's a little artwork on the back there. I mean, they have the same quality as, as some of the cereals that are out. See. These are chocolate. Get one that's not broken here. There you go. Cocoa smell. Cocoa Chanel. <laughs> uh, yeah, good crunch. Nice chocolatey taste to them. It's, it's a little like some of those chocolate cereals that you can buy, uh, like from Kellogg's or Post. Yeah. It has that crunchy tricks type of taste to it. So they're good. They're good. Probably, I mean, you can you can have it in a cereal bowl if you want to, but they're just as good, just normal. That way. <clears throat> now there's one thing I'm glad I got this box again because I wanted some more. <laughs> I'll get to that in a bit. I have some little interesting Halloween for you. This is the ho oh, it's Choco Bat. They're okay. Swing, batter, batter, swing! This chocolate-coated snack. Put this chocolate-coated snack right in your mouth for a sweet and satisfying home run. Home run? I guess that says home run for you. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, these, these are okay. They look like... It's like a big chocolate... A dehydrated... Very dehydrated bread. Um, it's very porous and airy inside. They're a little bland because you have so much bread and very little chocolate. These would make would be way better if there was a core of of liquid chocolate inside or liquid gel to take away from the dryness of the bread itself because it being a, a very dehydrated quality to it it comes across a little chalky in, in a sort of way <coughs> ah, another one it's nice to get these boxes and they're not they don't have gummies that are melted <laughs> this little guy here see upside down no that's right this is the grape soda gummy Introducing grape soda in its newest form, a gummy. Chew on this tasty gummy dusted with extra flavor crystals for a Halloween night boost. Well, I would say they're new. I mean, maybe the flavoring is, because last time I think we had for a moon or something like that. But it's basically the same. It looks like a, uh, looks like a soda bottle. I mean, they're quite chewy. <laughs> a little tough because they're so they're they're not hard but they're not soft either softy hard <laughs> that's nice bubblicious or bubble double bubble type of great flavor to it with the sugar crystals on the outside quite tasty as most gummies are the only thing in here that's been damaged are these pockies. And I'm, that I'm not surprised because there should have been, this shouldn't have been put in here like this. Uh, if you're going to put, po come on, Jamaica, right? if you're going to put pockies in your box, make sure you give the box because the boxes usually come with two in it. So why only give one? So, and that way in the box, they won't break up. This is the lovely Halloween chocolate pocky. Each pocky pack is decorated with a Halloween design. Kick back and relax during your snack break. Yeah, it does have a nice Halloween artwork design to it, but the, because they're broken up, you know, they're all down the bottom. <laughs> so let's see what we got here. Yep, there's one, but. I don't think they're chocolate. This doesn't look like chocolate at all. 
As you can see, they look like strawberry. Yeah, it is. That's. I think you got the wrong thing here. No, they, see, they're pink. Please. Mm. It could be strawberry. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, that's strawberry. So you got the wrong thing. That's not chocolate. <laughs> it makes sense too. The color fits the bill. If this is chocolate, usually they'd be black or uh, brown. So your description's a little off there, Japan Grape. <laughs> got something tiny here. Looks like Compatio. I like the artwork on the skeleton. It's pretty cool. Uh, Halloween Paro Paro Compatio. Mm -hmm. In Japanese, Paro Paro, or the symbol they're showing here, is ono, is an onomatopoeia for lick. Compatio is a traditional Japanese sweet of star-shaped sugar candy that is often gifted, given as a gift. And these are... The first time I've ever seen green variety, you know, dark green. I've seen light and pink and blue and white. And, you know, this one doesn't want to open, so I'm just going to rip the corner here like that. I'll show you some of these. Little sugar nodules. They say they take a while to make. Nope. You can hear they're quite crunchy. They're just pure sugar. So that's what's we nice uh taste to them, as most compendia are. I mean they're they're never bad. I've never had one that was an, a mistake in tasting and quality. But they're it doesn't because it, it being green doesn't change the taste. It's all just plain sugar. That's all. You would think they would add some different qualities to it. Now, this is pretty cool. <clears throat> it looks like there's a bunch in here. Fruit Monster. I like the artwork. I mean, it's really catchy. If you saw if you saw this on the store shelf, you would think you'd stop and look at it. I mean, it's quite attractive in the grab. I mean, the big mouth and the eyes. It looks like a tongue. The sticks inside look like a tongue. Fruit. Fruit Monster Rainbow. Not all monsters are scary. This one has fruity rainbow candy to share with you. Bite into this soft gummy when you have a monster's craving for something sweet. Yep. See if I can open. Yep, it did open up properly. One second. That way I can. Oh, it's got it's got a little tray in it with the, with the uh, the gummies inside. Are they separated? Yep, they are. Cool. If I can get one, just just one off here, they're a little stuck together. And that, that's neat. Very colorful. Bendy. <laughs> Has a sugary smell to it. Obviously, you can see you can see there's sugar crystals on there. Um, quite tangy and sweet. A little bit, of, just a little bit of sour to it. Not much. Hmm. No reason to spoil it. Might as well go ahead and eat the whole thing. <laughs> what is this? Hmm. That's a nice. That sour sweet combination. Quite is really good. Now I've got this odd little, let me see if I can get the, the bottom here, this odd little thing right here, a strawberry soft. It's almost too cute to eat. This sweet marshmallow type treat is flavored like strawberry shortcake. Oh, okay. Oh, the bottom's open. It might have just happened when I hold on it. Has a sugary smell to it. Doesn't smell like strawberry shortcake though. Mm, a little chewy. Might be because it could have been opened in the box. So 
being instead of being crunchy like you expect the uh, cone it's chewy um just tastes like a marshmallow I, I don't really marshmallow and sugar it doesn't have a there is a slight sweetness to it which enhances the marshmallow flavor but I'm not getting a strawberry hit to it next and I'll try this after the box if I can remember sometimes I forget I'm sorry about that yeah, this looks like it feels like a gobstopper inside. Uh, Dungori gum. Oh, it's a gum. Two for one. This soda flavored hard candy. Okay. Doubles. Oh, it's it's like the um, those those uh, I forget the, the the type of lollipops that we have around here. That's hard candy and then the gum on the inside. I forget the, what what are they called? I'll put it down below. Uh, doubles as gum, so when you're ready to switch it up, aim for the center for fun. Yeah, that's basically the same thing. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, it looks like Ramon flavored. Doesn't have a sense at all. Well, it's got a mild. It, it's the base. It even looks like that. Well, the only difference. Well. Yeah, it does have a ring, a slight ring around it, just like those lollipops. So I guess you use the same type of molding process where the gum is put in and it forms around it in a mold. <clears throat> uh, something jello here. Cocoa ball. Did you know Japan loves jelly? Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Mochi. <laughs> There's a variety of jelly candies, desserts, and drinks. Try it out for yourself with this bite of cola flavored jelly. There's the back side of it there. But you can see the It's like a little like a little UFO. <laughs> Let's see. Let me get it open here. Kinda reminds me of uh those jams that you can get that you use for toast you know at restaurants and it's that same type of open quality it definitely smells like cola and it likes to drip on my hand too <laughs> hmm. that's okay it's like jello which it is basically same same uh makeup of it very it's it's like a dehydrated uh, it's like a cola without the fizz so it's flat yeah could be better uh, which way does this go oh that way got another little gum a little dagashi gum sumiko garishi gum Gurashi, sorry. Gurashi gum. Trick or treat at the home of Sumiko Gurashi Cuties. They're giving you the yogurt flavored gum. Ooh, really? Let's see what the smell tastes like. Let's see what the smell is like. And it's got the basic pillow shaped gum I can see before I even open the aluminum wrapper on it. And it even looks the same. It's, they're always white. It does smell like yogurt. I'm not going to chew it just yet. I'm going to save those two. Got other things to try. Got a nice little Disney themed carry all here. And you can pick it up and carry it wherever you go. Got the Mickey ears on the top. So it's a happy, happy harvest. This is something I'm not seeing here. I mean, to adjust my eyes. <laughs> Sometimes they just skip over me here. I'm still not seeing it. What's going on here? Huh. Is this a surprise snack that, we, that was put in the box? Because it is definitely... 
No, oh, I see. They're not showing the box. They're showing what's inside. Okay. This is the Halloween Disney character chocolate. Mickey and friends finished trick-or-treating, and they're sharing their chocolate loot with you. Enjoy this Halloween Disney character milk chocolate. All right. This one has a seal on it right here. I have to cut. There's a little uh, piece of tape right there, which allows this to flip up and open up. And inside... We have three, no, oh, sorry, four different chocolates. No, I don't need all of them. Let's see here. Oh, I see. That's pretty cool. Try to show you all three. And each one, like this one, the red one, has, oh, the cat. It's hard to see it. I'm trying to get it in the light just right. You can just see it right there. It's the cat from um, Alice in Wonderland. The Cheshire Cat. This one has uh, Donald's face right there. It's not very noticeable. And the orange. This has Minnie. Minnie Mouse on it. It's a little hard to see. Apologize, the light reflection. And this one has um, Donald's girlfriend. I forgot her name. What was? I, forgot. I totally forgot what her na her name was. Hmm. So let's try. I can show it to you now. I'm taking out the package. There you go. That's much better. Oh my god, I ate Donald's girlfriend! That didn't come out right. <laughs> nice, uh... Hershey's... Chocolate type of flavor to it. Good, hard chocolate. I think that's dark. That's, well, I could be... Yeah, that's milk chocolate. It's pretty good. Um... Look at the do it yourself kit. It's very strange looking. Pull this corner up so you can see it better. I don't think I, I don't recognize this one. Dinky Hunter Soft Candy. And what may be the most unique DIY kit, hunt hunt down an eel, cut him up, and pour the sauce on top and make your own confectionery unagi. Just the right amount of macabre and fun for Halloween. Okay. <laughs> Here's the bag. Let's see what the interior looks like here. So, inside we have a tray with the eel. <laughs> and then it's got some gel, or I guess blood gel you could put on it. And a nice little serrated plastic knife. It's got flat. Is that sharp? No. This side's not sharp, but this one's got a serration to it. So you can basically take the knife and cut through it. There you go. See what? Tastes like eel. No. Mmm. <laughs> Nice sugary gum. It's basically the same type of gum that you get in any of the do it yourself kits. But we've had them also as color changers where they change your taste, your, this will later, uh, change the color of your tongue and sticks and different th forms like that. So it's, it's, it's the same thing. Same thing, just color differently with the pink interior instead of just being solid all the way through. And something different with, I guess, to Tohato's Caramel Corn here, which is Japanese Chestnut Mont Blanc Caramel. Okay. Caramel Corn is the JC family favorite, a popular Japanese snack known for its sweet, airy crispness, or crispiness, sorry. 
This special seasonal flavor is Mont Blanc with chess, Japanese chestnut. What's Mont Blanc? The perfect autumn snack says chestnuts are one of the Jap of Japanese most popular fall treats. Nothing on the back side there. Get my, my little thing out. <coughs> what do you mean by Mont Blanc, though? I'm not familiar with that. It has a. It does have the. I mean, your normal caramel scent to it. And they always look like little uh, shrimp. And it tastes like cereal. They have that. Tricks or. Any of those type of cereals where it's that crunchy type of texture. has a sweet, a sugary sweet taste to it. Wow, these two interconnected. <laughs> mm. I mostly taste the sugar and then the crunch of whatever they're made of. Uh, I'm not sure. What, what, are, what are these actually made from? The, the, is this rice or corn? Uh, uh, the three, two, one. Taste wise, the, I mean, it's very sweet, but the, uh, and it has that caramel type quality to it as they do what all of them do I mean that's why they're called caramel corn but mostly I'm tasting the the corn the sugar a little bit of the caramel I mean if there's, if there's chestnut there and I don't know what that hot blanc is other than wine I'm not really getting the hint of the chestnut they're so airy. They're basically like um, cotton candy. They just melt away in your mouth so fast after you crunch down. They're good. No, I, I do like them. These are quite good. I, I'll definitely finish this bag off in no time. Some bags I, I just can't get through. I mean, sometimes we get these and it's just like, mm. uh, strawberry, I can get through real fast. The, but I'm not, I'm not, it's not giving me that chestnut flavoring because I had chestnuts just recently and I'm not, I'm not, it's not there for me at, at least. Next we have something that looks really good. We've had this before in various flavors. I think uh, the biggest one has always been strawberry, but the chocolate and uh, maybe matcha, but look, very artful. I love the quality of it. It says 40, 40th, I guess that's 40th anniversary up there at the top. Takan, Takenako, Takenako? Takinoko, probably. Takinoko. T-A-K-E-N-O-K-O. Takinoko no Sato Strawberry Shortcake. Uh, that means bamboo shoot village in Japanese. And that's exactly what's inside this box. Each chocolate biscuit is a bamboo shoot, a baby bamboo shoot, except way tastier because they're strawberry shortcake flavored. Mm. And there's the nice backside to it. What is that? Saying something is a mystery. <laughs> these, these little guys there saying something. Not sure what it says. Then you have the pull tab on the side here. Pulls open. And usually, no artwork this time. A lot, a lot of times they they do put that. And you have the colorful artwork that's on the packaging there. Smells 
Smells like strawberry shortcake. <clears throat> and there's the little bamboo shoots. Most of the time you find these, and I, I have, I can get them around here um, at my local Asian markets, and also at uh, Second and Charles, I believe they have, but they're chocolate. Mmm, nice cookie. Not sure what that is. If it's, I guess it's a, like a shortbread cookie inside, as you can see from the bottom. It's coating it. You have that shortbread taste with a white chocolate coating on the outside that has a mild strawberry shortcake flavoring to it. It's not overpowering. The sugar itself is not <clears throat> it's not really strong, so it's quite tasty as they are. Um, Meiji who makes these, they always they're always good. They've never had a bad one. Now, lastly, we have, I need a drink here, hold on a second. If you're wondering what that is, it's Izzy, the sparkling clementine. They're really good. We have two bags. These big guys. It's like choco balls. Peanut choco ball Halloween pack. You can't have Halloween without these classic Japanese chocolates. They're chocolate-covered crunchy peanuts. So that's basically it. You don't know, have to read the rest. Chocolate-covered chocolate peanuts. And inside we have different artful ones. Like they all say something different. That one's got cats on it. This one here has got bats. Let's see what else we have. Ooh, there's a ghost. Is that ghosts on it. Anything different? Nope. Three different styles. So we'll go for the black cats. And inside, chocolate covered peanuts. Mm, ooh, those are good peanuts too. Definitely tastes like they're roasted. Uh, actually, it tastes very fresh, like straight out of a can, out of a package. Mm. Good chocolate, milk chocolate on the outside. Those are good. Thank you. Thanks for a snack pack. And lastly, my favorite that we've had in a previous Tokyo Tree Fox. Oh, apple pie Kit Kats again. Yay. These, <clears throat> these limited edition Kit Kats are apple pie flavored, but they're also purple. What's going on? <laughs> no, they're not sweet potato. Well, the story goes that the ghosts turned the chocolate purple for Halloween. They also made these delicious apple pie Kit Kats the perfect balance of sweet and sour. They're not sour. They're sweet. And here's the back side. Not as artful as your normal Kit Kats. I have a, a bag over here from Tokyo Treat that's got three different flavors in it. Sweet potato, um, brown tea with slight charcoal, and orange chocolate. Now I can add these to it. <laughs> Here's the purple. Ooh, they smell so good. Have a very strong cinnamon apple smell to them. Mmm. Mmm. Best Kit Kats ever made. Oh, I'll take that back. No, that's sweet. That's not sour. There's a nice apple sweetness to it when you bite in and then you get the cookie flavoring which is the crust of the pie mm. you can't beat an actual 
hot apple turnover, but it's dang close. <laughs> so, I know that John on Only in Japan uh, did a review back in October of these with his wife. And you can actually see it on his channel where he did a taste test between those and a fresh apple pie they just got from a bakery there which is what these are supposed to be based on and he says they are very good together i mean they 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 complement each other perfectly so that that goes to show that these are the best kit kats ever made and i have to agree it's really really good so that oh um let's taste the take part of it here yeah gum yep that's a nice sugar hit it has, mm, I'm not sure if it's yogurt well there's a mild yogurt type quality to it hmm I don't want to I don't want to suck on this right now. I want to save it for later. I know it's going to be ramen flavor because it's blue. And it's just going to basically be those lollipops you just suck on eventually. You get, once you, how many licks do you, to, does it take to get to the core? Uh, once you get there and then you can chew on it like gum. But that's all for this box. Um, you know, I put some, Star Wars books out. It's Star Wars Mania right now because everybody's going, well, not everybody. The people who don't know are going crazy for Rise of Rise of Skywalker. The Skywalker. Piece of crap film. As the the entire Disney fied trilogy is, they screwed it up from the get go, with in my opinion. And not just mine, all the major fans. Especially those on some of my favorite YouTube channels, which you can see, WBS, uh, WCBS, well, that's abbreviation, but uh, not a fan of what Disney has done to Star Wars, other than the Mandalorian, that's good, Mandalorian's excellent, it's got its problems, some stupidity here and there, but at its core, it's proper Star Wars, the movies are not, and, and uh, They've, they've ruined the trilogy. They, they, they disrespected the foundation of the original trilogy, the, the prequels, and the, the established over, what is it, like a million year uh, expanded, original sta expanded universe which, they, universe, which they just tossed in the trash can and said, well, we're going to make our own alternate universe and not even give a care to the fans. Well, Kathleen Kennedy didn't. John Favreau and Dave Filoni do. And that's why Mandalorian's great. Even with its flaws. So, I highly recommend Mandalorian. Don't go see Rise of Skywalker. It's already gotten bad review anyway, because it's garbage. Just like The Last Jedi was. <laughs> and But, these are some of my classic <clears throat> classic books. Like, this is a cool one. I got it in Belgium back in the early 2000s. I think it was 2000. Uh, I was in a bookstore there. And it's, it's got the... Shows you different figures that are out. And the, the different stats. I mean, it's in, fr in French. But that didn't care to me. I just loved the, the, the look of it and... The way they did their figures inside, so you can see each one. And then this is Steve Sansweet's classic Tomarch Price Guide, which is excellent because it shows you everything you want to see. And this is Jeffrey T. Carlton's Super Wish Book. And this was put out in 2011. So. And it's it's really good. It's, it's basically like Steve's book here, but bigger. But 
Just wanted to put some Star Wars stuff there for you can see. All right. That's all for this video. I hope you enjoy, and I'll see you in the next unboxing. Thanks for watching.